<clears throat> All right, welcome to Canvas LMS integration session. Uh, we're super excited to have you with us. Um, you can find the bit.ly um, underneath where it says integration session. So if you open a browser of your choice or a new tab, you can type that bit.ly in there and it's gonna give you access to the slides. You will need those today. So we're really excited to talk to you about these integration aspects inside Canvas. So we're gonna to touch on Google Apps, Canva, Pear Deck, Edpuzzle, Formative, Flipgrid, Kami, and the new studio, which is coming very, very soon. Um, we're gonna show you how you can use these tools inside your learning management system. So I'm gonna introduce myself very quickly. My name is Kendra Cameron Jarvis. I'm the blended learning coach for Coons, uh, Inca Intermediate, Inca Middle, and Valley Springs. And my colleague, I'm gonna let her introduce herself as well. Hi, I'm Pam Johnson, and I'm the blended learning coach for King Creek Middle School, Ace Reynolds Middle School, and Ace Reynolds High School. And happy to be here today. So we'd like to start with our learning targets, just like you start your class this way. It's important to know uh, the direction that we're going. So at the end of this session, you can say that you can integrate Google Apps effectively in your Canvas LMS. Um, you can also say that you are aware of other apps that integrate with Canvas and that you can use your Canvas integration in meaningful ways with your students. All right, I'm going to hand it over to Pam. Sure, and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, Kendra. All right, let me let me stop sharing. Okay. Okay. So the first thing that we're actually going to show you is a Canvas integration with Google Applications. And the reason we feel like this is important is so that you can see it from the teacher perspective in creating both a Google Cloud integration and a Google Assignment integration. Google Assignments are new as of, I think, last August. So what I'm doing, I'm inside my Canvas instance, and I have a module created. And I'm just going to go over to the right, and I'm going to click plus to add an assignment. So in each of these instances, you want to create a new assignment. So assignment, create a new assignment. The first one I'm going to do is a Google Cloud demo. All right, and I'm going to add that item. Remember, when you add items, it's just going to list them. They're not published yet, but we have to click on them to edit. So I'm going to click on it to edit. And I click edit. The purpose of this Google Cloud assignment is so that we can add a Google doc document or a Google slide, and it'll create each student their own copy. So I would put some directions here if I need to. I'm gonna give it points because it is an assignment. The most important part, however, and I also can integrate these assignments with PowerTeacher Pro. So if you are new or just checking out this LMS system, one of the positive things about Canvas is that you can sync your categories and sync your grades with PowerTeacher Pro. So this is where I would do that. Right. The most important piece is submission type. Submission type is where we're gonna find the external tool. And this, you're gonna use this a lot today. You'll use this with Cami, uh, add puzzle, a couple of other things if you explore those, op those options. So I'm going to click on external tool and find. I'm going to scroll down and you're going to see two Google options. So the first Google option that I'm going to choose is the cloud assignment. And again, you can read below, it gives a description, but this simply pulls in the document or the slide and creates a copy for the student. So that they're not having to navigate out and access it separate from Canvas. So I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna connect my Google account. So if I'm not prompted, you probably will be prompted the first time you use it. And you'll just authorize Canvas to use your BCS email Google account. All right, so I'm already authorized, so it's finding me. So now you can see I'm inside my drive. I'm just going to go find document. All right, I'm going to hit select. 
And now I'm going to set up the Canvas assignment just like I normally would. So I can choose to assign it to just one or two students, certain students, everyone in the course. I'm going to put a due date. So it's going to be due this Friday. I'm going to make it available today. And then I'm going to extend it to um, they can turn it in late. All right, save and publish. And you can see then in the demo, it's going to pull in my document. All right, so this is what it's also going to look like for students, and we'll show you that student view in just a minute. All right, so now I'm going to go back out because I'm in teacher mode, and I'm going to create a Google assignment. So we go back out to module. And I'm going to go to the plus sign to create an assignment, new assignment. This time, this one's going to be a Google assignment demo. And you can see how it looks different from the teacher in. So I did publish it. So this way, and I'm going to go ahead and publish this as well. So in a minute, you can see it from the student in. Uh, that was the one that we just did, the cloud. Now I'm going to do the assignment. So I click on this to edit. I'm going to click edit. We're going to do the same thing with external tool. So again, you can add directions if you want to. Or explanations or even support material. Like you could add video or images, whatever you need to support the document you're attaching. It is an assignment, so I'm going to give it points. If I want to connect to Power Teacher Pro, I would then select my category. And the most important part, submission type. I'm going to choose external tool, find. And this time, when I look for their alphabetized, Google Assignment LTI. And you can see this one is going to collect, analyze, and grade. So the biggest part, I think, with or the biggest difference is that the grades are integrated with SpeedGrader. And we'll show you that in just a minute, too. See what that looks like. All right, so notice this time it is going to ask me to choose my account and continue to authorize my assignments. So before I attached a Google Doc, this time I'm here's my attach. So I'm going to click attach and find a Google slide to show you that that works as well. But notice that you have this assignment looks like a Google Classroom assignment. So you also have originality um, checks that you could do for plagiarism. You can set your points. One thing to note, because the Google assignment does connect to SpeedGrader and Canvas automatically, you want to make your total points in this assignment match the points that I put in the classroom assignment. Okay, and I can also select a due date. I would also make those match if you're going to set your dates and hit create. But first of all, let me attach my file. So when I click attach, because I've allowed it to access my Google Drive, All right, I'm gonna hit create. And as soon as it comes back to this section, click select. Again, I can assign it, due dates. I really always encourage people to put in all three of these dates. You can change them. And as always with Canvas, you need to make sure you're aware of those dates because if you are going to sync with Power Teacher Pro. And I always set my um, until date after it's due to allow for a couple of students who might have missed the assignment. All right, so we've got two different Google integrations set up. The first one was just simply connecting a Google Doc or a Google slide that makes a copy for each student. But you can see the Google assignment actually creates an entire screen view and it acts a little more like Google Classroom. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Kendra and let her show you from her side, the student view. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And let me see if I can. All right, so I'm gonna go into my course, okay? I'm gonna go into modules. So this is the first assignment 
um, that Pam linked the Google Cloud demo. Um, so from a student perspective, this is what it's going to look like. And so it might take just a few seconds to load. Okay, so there it is. All right, and again, I sh this is my own copy. So I can go in and I can make edits to this document. Okay, so as a student, when I'm ready to submit it, I'm gonna go up here and choose submit. I'm gonna go back to modules. So we're gonna look at this second assignment, Google assignment demo one. Let's take a minute. Okay, so um, this is what this one looks like as a, uh, from a student perspective. Okay, so I can click the blue button. All right, it's gonna give me the option to open the presentation. Again, it's my own copy, so I can go in and I can make um, edits on it, all right? I love how it actually puts your name on the title at the top too. Oh yeah, that is you nice. You have to do that, yes. That mm -hmm. is nice. It's a lot like it would feel like in Google Classroom, mm -hmm. okay? So once I've done my edits, all I need to do is hit submit, all right? And it's gonna say, do you really wanna submit your work? Yes, I really wanna submit my work. Okay, and then once it's submitted, this one gives you that confetti, which is kind of nice. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so I'm going to stop sharing and that way you can see it from the teacher's side uh, once it's been submitted. All right, so finally, these are our two assignments. Let's look at the cloud demo. So I'm going to click that and in this one, Remember, we just have a template that's here. So the student had to click on that to get their own copy. And this one, we will need to go through SpeedGrader. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on SpeedGrader. And you can see, I can see her edits. I can come over and I can actually, I do have a few editing tools here as well that I can work on, um, but I can come give her a grade in SpeedGrader just like you normally would an assignment. All right, let's take a look, however, at the other one. I've got some things that are spinning at the top. Let me close those real quick <laughs> so it doesn't open them. Okay, so back on modules. The assignment, Kendra and I were talking earlier about why would you use one over the other? Honestly, I think I would probably take the time and do the assignment just because it has this grade integration. And you can see there's so much more information right here. You don't have to click on the speed grader, find the student to see if they've submitted it or not. One thing we played around with too is while from the screen, while the students are working, I can click and go to, for example, Madeline's not finished. I could go to Madeline's and I can work inside of that Google Doc and give her real time comments. So uh, she hasn't finished yet. I could look and see, is she making the changes that I asked for? So those are real time comments. However, let me, sorry, let me click back to Kendra's. Kendra's has submitted hers. So I'm gonna click on Kendra's. Another thing, I don't know if you caught that because I clicked kind of quickly, but over to the right, let me move the screen, you have grading options. So I can still add comments. I can come in, I can add these comments inside of the Google slide or Google doc, just like I would in a normal setting. But then I can also come over and give her grade, give her feedback and return the work. So when I click return, this is not only gonna give Kendra her grade, she'll see all my comments. Um, you know, I could even go back out and go into speed grader and give additional types of comments. But notice the grade populated. So as long as they are, are out of the same type of points, so they match up, once you put that grade in that Google assignment embedded, it'll pop it over into SpeedGrader for you. And then here are your additional comment options and attachments if you need. All right. That's really nice that you can, um, with that um, integration that you can give the assignment, you can return it because if you give that actionable feedback, then the student can take whatever action is that you've asked them to do, switch it, switch something, change something, 
um, and then they can resubmit it, right? And you can give them an updated grade so that you're teaching for mastery. I really like that. I do too. And it allows that smooth integration of Google Docs and Sheets, the things that kids are familiar with, so that they're not always having to try to figure out how to do it in Word or other formats. But all right, let's move on. So that was the external tool. Kendra, take it away. (laughs) Okay. So this is where we wanted to give you a little choice. So we've got all of these integrations that we introduced to you at the very beginning of this uh, training session. We've got Flipgrid, Edpuzzle, Kami. You've seen the Google, which is amazing. We've got Canva. We've got Pear Deck Informative. So each of these links to a specific slide that has a little short video that shows you how to integrate all of these digital tools inside Canvas LMS. Um, So if you're watching this video, what we ask you to do is just hit pause and go and explore. If you like to use Flipgrid, go and look at Flipgrid. If you like to use Pear Deck, take a moment and look at Pear Deck, and then we'll come back together in a few minutes um, and kind of think about some ahas and things that we really liked about these integrations. So now that you're back and you've had a moment to watch some of the videos, um, think about some ahas. Did you learn something new? Did you learn um, something that maybe not learn it, but were you, did you review something that you already knew, but maybe it was used in a new way? Um, So take a minute and think about your ahas um, and maybe how you might use that integration in your classroom. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we are gonna look at Flipgrid. So let me go ahead and do this and let me clean up here a little bit. All right. Flipgrid's always making changes. We were talking about that. So we're excited to show you this live too. Yeah, so I know a lot of teachers uh, use Flipgrid um, and have used it in the past. And Flipgrid is one of those tools that is constantly changing. They're always adding new features uh, to Flipgrid. So um, one of the newest features um, that I saw used in the classroom recently is the mic only mode. So there was a teacher at Valley that was using Flipgrid to create podcasts in her classroom. Um, And it was super simple. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to go into my class because I want to show you how to take Flipgrid and embed it inside your LMS, because that's why we use an LMS. An LMS is your digital classroom, and it's a safe space for students um, because you bring in the materials inside the LMS, and they're not linking out um, across the web. You're keeping them inside that LMS. So I'm going to show you how to integrate uh, Flipgrid. So the very first thing is you're going to go into your course that you want to integrate Flipgrid. All right. And we're going to scroll down um, all the way to the bottom. Um, And just a tip, sometimes I have to minimize my screen, especially if I have a lot in my um, um, bar here, my navigation bar. So I have to do control minus and it kind of shrinks the screen so that I can see more. So you may have to do that to get all the way to settings. But once you get there, you can do control plus and make it large again. So. All right, so these are all of our apps. When you click on settings, you've got these tools or these tabs up here, and we're going to start with apps. We're going to look for Flipgrid, okay? So you're going to go ahead and type in Flipgrid, and hopefully it will show up here. So we're going to go ahead and hit the plus, plus. and what we want to do first is we want to add Flipgrid. So we're going to say add the app, and it's going to ask for the consumer key and the shared secret. All right, and I'm going to show you how to find them. So I have to say this first, and I should have started with this. You have to be a Flipgrid user. So before you do this, make sure that you do have a Flipgrid account, okay? And it's free. You can sign up for Flipgrid. It's very, very simple, all right? So I've got Flipgrid open over here, all right? And I'm going to go to the very top where it says login. All right, so once I log in, to the right, I'm going to look for my profile, and mine is the smiley face. So yours may be an actual image of you. Okay, 
All right. And we are going to click on profile. Okay. So we are by default in account settings. We're going to choose integrations. All right. And we're going to scroll down here to Canvas. Okay. I've already integrated it into a couple of my courses. Um, so that's why I have that here. Here's maybe blank, and that's okay. We're going to click this blue button. This is add new integration. And this is where we want to name the integration. So I recommend naming it the same as your Canvas course. Okay. So mine is Kendra's training course. Yours might be. ELA block one. All right. So we're going to go ahead and create. Okay. And this is the consumer key that we need and the shared secret. So I'm going to copy this consumer key. I'm going to pop back over here and I'm going to paste it into consumer key. I'm going to do the same thing with this secret. All right. Shared secret. I'm going to pop it in here. And now I'm going to say add tab. Okay. So now Flipgrid is listed under installed. So that's the first part of um, adding Flipgrid. We've got to add the app. Okay. So that was pretty simple. Now let's add it as an assignment because that's really what we want to do. Okay. So you're still in your course and we're going to go over to assignments. Okay. And we're going to do, we're going to choose plus assignment. Okay, this is where we're going to give our, our assignment a name. So I might say, um, I don't know, introductions. Okay, and then here I might give them directions. Um, I might also um, include a learning target. Okay, so they know what the goal is here. And then just like you saw earlier, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna add all of the information that I need. Um, you can also do assignment groups. So if you're syncing with Power Teacher Pro, you can add your category there. Okay, and of course you can, you can change this if you choose. So we're gonna go to submission type. Oops, let me go back up. We're gonna do submission type. And this is where we're gonna choose external tool, okay? We're gonna choose find, and we're gonna look for Flipgrid. Um, just know, I know a lot of people have done this, but this has two scrolls. So um, you're gonna use this inner scroll, and we're gonna scroll until we see Flipgrid. There it is, okay? And we're gonna select it, okay? You can choose for this to load in a new tab if you like, All right? And then again, we're gonna go down here, we're gonna give it a due date. So let's do the 19th, okay? And I like to extend it a little bit longer. And then let's do today, okay? All right, so we've added all our information and now we're gonna say save and publish. So the first time you do this, we're gonna connect it and it's actually creating your Canvas uh, course name, your group inside Flipgrid. It's just connecting the two. And there it is. So just, just so you know, I want you to take a peek at this. So we've got Flipgrid here. We've got our course name. We've got the topic. Okay. We've got groups, discovery, shorts, everything's in there. All right. And if I click back over here to Flipgrid, okay, it looks the same. Okay, so it's really taking that website, right? And it's embedding it inside your course, okay? So here is what I just created here, okay? Same thing, all right? But it's in Canvas. So now what I can do is I can go um, to the three dots and I can edit my topic and I can add um, what I want them to do here. I can add I can record a video just like I would in Flipgrid. I can change um, the recording time. I can add the attachments. I can even go up here and change all the settings. So it's just simply taking that website and it's embedding it inside your LMS. So your students don't have to leave your LMS to get to Flipgrid. It's all safe inside your LMS. So let me go ahead and choose update. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and 
stop sharing. And let me pull up here. All right, so that hopefully you will use Flipgrid um, to uh, prompt discussions in your classroom. Um, the cool thing about Flipgrid, if you didn't know, is check out the Discovery Library because those are pre-made grids and topics that you can use in your classroom. So that will save you a lot of time as well. Great. Um, so I'm going to pop up our slides again. And uh, <clears throat> we just wanted to take a second for uh, the people who are watching this and just encourage you to go through these slides you know, in our live session, we're doing demos. So we're gonna actually go through these slides right now just to give a little bit of an overview and maybe a tip for each one. If you looked at this or if you didn't get a chance to look at all of them when you were doing your choice time. All right, so on each slide, you're gonna have at least a how-to or a short, this is what it's about, but a short little video to get you started and then a help document that will give you some more information depending on your learning style. Okay, so let me pause that, go forward. Edpuzzle. So I do want to point out something about Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle works with external tool when you create the assignment, just like your Google Assignments and just like Flipgrid. One thing that is important, and this video will talk about that, is when you create the Edpuzzle, it's on the assignment itself. So in the navigation on the left, we really encourage you to hide some of these links that you won't need. And the Edpuzzle link is one that you won't. It's really there to let you know that it is a connected app. So that's that one tip for Edpuzzle. Anything else you want to say about Edpuzzle, Kendra? Um, you can use it uh, once you integrate it. You can use it as student paste or teacher mode. It's your choice. And Edpuzzle like Pear Deck, one of the things we like with Pear Deck is it lets you know when the student has finished. I know with Edpuzzle, sometimes they're going through at their own pace and they're on different questions. And you may, as a teacher, have to keep revisiting it if they are doing it asynchronous. But this is a great way for you to go, okay, the student submits it or they let you know they're finished. And then you can go back in and give them a grade. So it kind of finalizes that. Let's pause that, move forward. Canva, tell us a little bit about Canva. So Canva is a great tool um, for students to um, make all sorts of things. A lot of students make social media posts, posters, um, um, book covers, all, all sorts of creative projects. Um, so the way this works with uh, Canvas is it's not truly embedded. This is the steps. Just make sure that you sign up for Canva for educators. There's a link there. It's free and it will give you the pro version of Canva for free. When you um, include this integration, um, you create a class for your students inside Canva for free. And then um, once it's integrated, students click on that and you can see all of their work they've done inside Canvas. So it's a really nice way for students to be creative um, and show what they've learned in your classroom and it's free. Cool. Oh, I love it. And I'm glad you gave us that link too, because forever I kept wanting the pro ones. They're so nice. Yeah. So thank you. All right. Let me pause that video. Whoops. All right. So a Pear Deck, same thing that, you know, we mentioned earlier with Edpuzzle. This is one of those ones where asynchronously students can be at different points, different slides. And this is just a great way to look at some information and stats about where they at and have they finished. Um, I'm going to move forward. And Cami, we are paying for Cami now, and the additional features are quite are amazing. We're really loving working with Cami in our classrooms. So Cami, again, if you're taking notes, uses the external external tool. So you'll create an assignment. You'll go use that external tool, find Cami, select the document that you want. It gives every student their own copy, um, and then in the top right, they'll hit submit. Sends it right back to you that in classroom, or excuse me, in Canvas so that you can uh, grade them and look at them. And you can go live and create a comments, give video feedbacks, it has read aloud. It's a really good tool. Did I miss anything? <laughs> I just wanted to plug for our ELL teachers mm -hmm. and uh, teachers that work with ELLs. It does have a great translation tool in there as well. 
Yes. Um, work with your DLF or a blended learning coach, sorry, or your uh, ELL teacher, because in the top right, the three lines, when you click that, it allows you to change a document to OCR and that optical character recognition is what allows the program to see the text and read it aloud. So that might be one step that you might want to work with them, but it's a great tool for that. Okay, you got to stop those videos when they start. <laughs> there we go. All right, and then formative. Formative is something, another program that we are paying for for Buncombe County teachers. Um, again, formative works the same way. And the nice thing about, for, as far as the external tool, the nice thing too about formative is it integrates like the Google assignments. So when you grade a formative and formative, those grades will pop right over into your speed grader for you. So check out that integration. And finally, I think we're at our cloud integrations that we did our demos with. And we also wanted to end today, if I can get past some of the little videos autoplaying, <laughs> we wanted to end with a little overview of Canvas Studio. So a new video feature that we're pulling in for all of our Canvas users it allows a teacher to take a video that they have on a device and upload it or create their own video and embed their own questions and stops throughout. Um, it's, it's really nice. We were really impressed with this program. It also allows students to create their own video and do some peer editing and reviews. So we have a training just on studio coming up February 8th, but if you wanna use it ahead of time, you can check out this link that tells you how to get started in some training. So anything else about that, Kendra? Uh, nothing other than you're gonna want to use this. You are, you're gonna like this a lot. We are, we're excited about rolling this out. Okay, and then we're gonna end it with um, a way to do a self-assessment check. Kendra, you wanna look at that? Yeah, so this is a single point rubric. Um, and if you follow Catlin Tucker, um, she's a blended learning guru, um, or Jennifer Gonzalez from Cult a Pedagogy podcast and blog. Both of them have talked about the single point rubric. And so it looks a little different than the traditional rubric that we've used. Um, if you notice the criteria is in the center and there's not very many of them, it's just three. Um, and then on either side um, are areas for feedback. So the left side is where um, the teacher, even the student can write concerns that they need to work on based on that specific criteria. And then the right hand side is where they've exceeded that the standard or the criteria and there's feedback there. So there, um, if you click on um, the self-assess using the single point rubric and this, the pink circle in the left, it will take you to the blog post by Jennifer Gonzalez so you can read a little bit about um, the single point rubric and there is a template there so you can uh, create one of your own. Um, there's also research there that talks about the effectiveness of using a single point rubric and one of the biggest things that comes out of that uh, research study is that it limits the amount of criteria for students to focus on um, so that they can really um, excel and exceed on the criteria that's listed. So I have three criteria here that relates back to our learning targets, but you can choose to just do one or two. So let's do this together. Now that we've finished the training, um, it's always nice to have some sort of exit ticket. So. I would love for you to look at criteria one, two, and three and just self-assess. So can you integrate Google Apps and Canvas? Yes or no? Can you integrate an app of your choice into Canvas? And can you list ways um, that this integration, that you will use this integration in the next few weeks? So just take a moment and self-assess. And we really appreciate you being with uh, us today. <laughs>